Church. We're so excited that you've chosen to worship with us today. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure you stop by our Connect station for more information. Attention Jesus is Lord family, our JILC Dream Team is currently recruiting for media and worship. If you're interested in being a part of these two powerful groups, you can sign up today at any of the Connect Centers. JILC Dream Team, we're better together. JILC Family Empowered Kids is the place to be every Sunday morning for your children. Fun, games, activities, and ministry that's right on their level is sure to make an impact on their lives for Jesus. If your kids are missing Empowered Kids, they're missing it. Empowered Kids, every Sunday morning, right here at Jesus' Lord Church. Empowered Live is now broadcasting with a live studio audience. The only thing that's missing is you. If you'd like to be a part of our Power Pack studio audience, join us every Monday at 8 p.m. for our Empowered Live broadcast with Pastor Kevin McGinnis. Empowered Live, Mondays at 8 p.m. Do you have struggles, hang-ups, and addictions? Jesus is Lord Church is proud to announce the launch of our brand new recovery program, Stand Recovery. Join us on the first and third Tuesday of every month, starting on September 5th. Stand Recovery, finding freedom for your mind, your body, and your spirit. Are you ready for a little pick-me-up to help you get through your work week? Join us every Thursday for Jesus is Lord midweek service at 7 p.m. For more information, visit us at the Connect Station. JILC men, are you ready to be a mighty man of valor? Join Pastor Kevin and the JILC Iron Men for our God's Mighty Men of Valor Fellowship Breakfast on July 15th at 10 a.m. We can't wait to see you, you mighty men of valor. Calling all teenagers ages 13 to 19, are you ready to show the next generation the love of God? Join our Empowered Youth Services on the second Friday of every month. Services begin at 7 p.m. Young adults ages 20 to 40, are you committed to creating a culture that connects and cares? Join us for our next Young Adult Night on the third Friday of every month. Services begin at 7 p.m.
everybody. It's Pastor Kevin McGinnis. Thank you for joining us for Jesus is Lord Church. It's going to be an amazing service today. I believe your faith is about to go to another level. Now stay tuned because I believe with all of my heart that this word is going to encourage you, bless you, and empower you to become all that God is destined for you to be. I believe you were blessed by today's message. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms so you can stay connected to all that's happening right here at Jesus is Lord Church. Olga and I would love to connect with you. So come and be a part of any one of our worship experiences every Thursday night, 7 p.m., Sunday mornings, 11 a.m. Also, we want to join our faith with you. Do you need a miracle? Are you believing God for something extraordinary in your life? You can send up your prayer request to Today to prayer at JILC.org. If you've been blessed by this message, then sow a seed. Be a part of what we're doing, not just here on Long Island, but around the world. All the ways to give are on the screen right there. We love you. Until next time, be blessed. Thank you. 
someone shout that so they can hear you on Long Island Avenue. Hallelujah. Come on and shout in this place. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for miracles tonight, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for revival tonight, oh God. And as we begin to cry out, oh God, we thank you, oh God, that you're doing something, oh God, that we've never seen before. We thank you right now, oh God. Come on and lift up. Come on and lift it up tonight. And clap your hands one more time. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together tonight? How many came expecting a breakthrough tonight? Defeated one, my life and my salvation. When the wicked, my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat them, they stumbled and fell. Hallelujah! Somebody celebrate Jesus! Oh yeah! So you are omnipotent, omnipotent, Almighty Defender. Victory, my refuge, the one I run to. You are the God, you are the God of the brave. Now, with peace, the God of your breakthrough tonight. Hey, clap your hands up high and say, Breakthrough, break new alignment, 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 new Feel the one, my life and my salvation. When the wicked, my enemies and my foes they stumbled and fell. Anybody believe the devil's under your feet tonight? Hey, say I'm never sick. Oh my defender, my victory, my refuge, the one I run to. You are the God. You are the God of the Now with peace the God of your breakthrough tonight. Clap your hands up high and say breakthrough. You are the God. Oh, and when I can't see my way through, and I really don't know what I look to you. Breakthrough, walls fall down. It's strong. Shout a breakthrough in this place. If you still believe that our God moves mountains, if you still believe our God does miracles, come on and shout in this place. Hey, we worship you. Do you believe He's the God of your breakthrough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, can we declare this tonight? Breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough. In my spirit, break through in my soul, break through in my weakness, break through in my struggle. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, break through in my praise, break through when I lift and glorify your name, break through when I dance, break through when I shout. Break 
Shout in this place. And come on and break through. Come on and break through. I know some of you came in here heavy laden down with something. But I need you to release your cares unto the Lord. For he cares for us. Hallelujah. For we come to give you glory, Jesus. There's nobody like you, oh Father. Can we say? Clap your hands in expectation for that breakthrough tonight. Let me say that again. Clap your hands, jump to your feet, give God praise in expectation of your breakthrough tonight. Tell somebody, I'm ready for a breakthrough. Turn around, tell somebody, say, are you ready for a breakthrough? Are you ready? Have you come to play church or are you ready for something supernatural? Tell somebody else, say, I'm ready for a breakthrough tonight. Hallelujah, glory to God's great name. Those of you that are joining us online tonight, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to share, like, follow. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, do it tonight, right now. Kevin McGinnis, Jesus is Lord Church. 
Everybody else turn with me in your Bible to the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 14, if we could stand for the reading of the Word of God. Now, many people ask, are we going to have a tent meeting this year? Well, we're having tent weather inside the building. Amen. And I want you to know, just so you understand, when I preach in Haiti, it's double, literally double this temperature. 140 degrees out in the sun. 130 degrees, unbelievable, unexplainable temperature. So this is nothing. Amen. Acts chapter 14. Hallelujah. Verse number 1. Amen. If you're there, shout, I'm there. Everybody read along with somebody if you don't have a Bible. But the Word of God will change your life. It changed mine. The Word of God will save your soul. It saved mine. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Paul said it has power to save your very soul. Acts 14, verse 1. Are you excited to be here tonight? Shout if you're excited you're in the house of the living God. Acts 14 and 1. The same thing happened in Iconium. Verse 1, Paul and Barnabas went to the Jewish synagogue and preached and preached with such power that a great number of both Jews and Greeks became believers. Some of the Jews, however, spurned God's message and poisoned the minds of the Gentiles. Say it with me. They poisoned, say the religious people, poisoned the minds of the Gentiles against Paul and Barnabas. But the apostles stayed there, everybody shout a long time, preaching boldly about the grace of the Lord. And the Lord proved their message was true by giving them power to do miraculous signs and wonders. Everybody shout power to do miraculous signs and wonders. But the people of the town, they were divided in their opinion about Paul and Barnabas. Some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. Then a mob, the mob, there was a mafia back then too. Everybody think the five families was the mafia. No, there was a mob back then. Then a mob of the Gentiles and Jews, along with their leaders, decided to attack and stone them. When the apostles learned of it, they fled to the region of Lyconia to the towns of Lystra and Derby, and the surrounding area. And there, everybody shout, in there, they preached the good news. Now flip over in your Bible to Acts 17, remain standing, to verse number 1. Just six more verses and you could sit down, hopefully not fall asleep. Acts 17, verse 1, it says this, Acts 17 and 1, are you there? Amen. After passing through the city, of Amphipolis and Apollonia, Paul and Silas arrived at Thessalonica. And as they customarily did, they went to the synagogue to speak to the Jews from the scrolls. For three weeks, Paul challenged them by explaining the truth and proving to them the reality of the gospel, that the Messiah had to suffer and die, then rise again. Thank God he rose again. Hallelujah. Then rise again from among the dead. He made it clear to them saying, I come to announce to you that Jesus is the anointed one, the Messiah. Some of the Jews were convinced that their message was true. Everybody shout, some of them believed. Some of them were convinced that the message was true. So they joined Paul and Silas along with quite a few prominent women and a large number of Greeks. Everybody shout, who worshiped God. But many of them, pay attention, don't miss it. Many of the Jews were motivated by the bitter jealousy and formed a large mob, there it is again, out of, everybody shout, the troublemakers, unsavory characters, and street gangs to incite a riot. They set out to attack Jason's house, for he had welcomed the apostles into his home. For the mob was after Paul and Silas and take them by force and bring them out to the people. Verse 6, here it is. When they couldn't find Paul and Silas, they took Jason instead, along with some of the brothers in his house church. And they dragged them out before the city council. Along the way, they screamed out, those troublemakers, say with me, those troublemakers who have turned the world upside down have come here to our city 
I want to talk to you tonight from this message as I've been praying over this for the last two days. I want to talk to you tonight from the subject, Turn the World Upside Down. You may be seated. How many of you are ready to turn the world upside down? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. How many of you are ready to make an impact on the earth that will echo on way after we're gone into eternity? Shout amen, somebody. God has called you and I to turn the world upside down. Just because you go to church, that does not mean you are a radical warrior and faith-filled follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a lot of people that come to church, and people that just attend church are going to fall by the wayside. Because God is raising up an army in this last hour that might invade enemy-held territory and capture souls for eternity. Somebody shout, I'm going to turn the world upside down. Today I'm going to share with you eight things. Eight things how you can turn the world upside down. The church in the New Testament, as you study it, it impacted the world. The church of the New Testament was a radical church. They were not like most people that I know today that claim to be Christians. But they were radical followers, a bunch of people that were on fire for God after experience a mighty encounter in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. Can you say amen? In Acts, the first chapter, it tells us and depicts to us the reason why they operated and demonstrated such great power. The Bible says Jesus himself before his ascension into heaven and sitting down at the right hand of the throne of God, he said to the early church, he says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you tell somebody you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you you don't understand how powerful you are and how powerful the person sitting next to you is if they've been filled with the life transforming power of the Holy Ghost everybody shall thank God for the Holy Ghost I'm not like most people that think they could just function as a Christian and go through the motions and make an impact in this world for Christ without power Every Christian needs the power of the Holy Ghost. Every follower and true disciple of Christ needs the awesome power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout amen. I don't care how long you're saved. You cannot live in your own strength, not one day. But each and every one of us must depend and lean on fully the power of the Holy Ghost. So we see that the church was born in a blaze of glory. In Acts the second chapter, it says that the day of Pentecost had fully come and they were all in one cord, in one one cord, one mind, in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing, mighty, violent wind. And the whole upper room was filled with the power of God. Everyone that sat in the upper room, they were filled with power from another world. And they began, hallelujah, to leave that place full of power. They went in ineffective, but they came out on fire. They went in, my God, limited, but they walked out with unlimited power. Say amen, somebody. Everybody shout, I have that power. If you don't, you need to get it. Amen. Because it is impossible to live victorious in the day and hour that we're living in and overcome every threat and demonic opposition and temptation without the mighty infilling of the Holy Ghost. Shout amen, somebody. But the early church, they turned the world upside down. 120 people, they were hungry. Anybody hungry on Long Island for a genuine move of God? Raise your hands and shout aloud, I'm hungry for God. But not everybody is hungry for God. I thought there were some people on Long Island that were believing God for a mighty revival. But I'm beginning, my God, to question people's Christian experience. Because once you experience the power of God, you no longer dwell in the bondages of the past. When you experience the genuine in life transforming power of the Holy Ghost. You are not the person you used to be. You don't practice sin anymore. Shout aloud amen. You're not a drug addict anymore. You're not a whoremonger anymore. You're not bound by addiction or fear anymore. But Jesus sets you free. Somebody shout I'm free. Tell somebody it feels good to be free. If you haven't found somebody that smiles yet you're in the wrong road. Turn around and tell somebody say it feels so good to be free. But the church in the New Testament was born in a blaze of glory. The church in the New Testament impacted the world. It changed the culture. I said it changed the culture. From Judea to Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. My God, the Bible says that they changed the world and they turned the world upside down. Shout amen somebody. They turned the world upside down. How? With their message? With 
their lives, their lifestyle, are you listening to me? With their commitment to Christ and their passion for the Lord. Are you listening to me? That's how they turn the world upside down. They had passion. They had a testimony. They had commitment. They had a message. What about you? How about each and every one of you? What about you? Are you ready to turn the world upside down? Or you just want to go to church and go through the motions another 12 months of your life? I don't know about you. There is a divine dissatisfaction deep, deep down in my heart to see God move in a mighty way. I'm thankful for the way I've seen God move. I'm thankful for the people that I've seen healed and set free and the multitudes that have been saved through the course over the 27 years that I've been preaching the gospel. But there is still more that God has for you and I. There is a lost and dying world that is in need of Jesus Christ. And I'm not just going to sit here. I'm not just going to play church. I'm going to ready my God to turn the world upside down. Everywhere the early church went, they healed the sick and they cast out devils and they made disciples for the Lord Jesus Christ. What about you? Are you making an impact for eternity? Who are you influencing? Are you just another status quo Christian, comfortable with the demonic culture around you? Are you apologetic for your faith? When you are opposed by the ungodly, you don't have an answer. But the Bible says when you are confronted with questions, you are always should be ready to give an answer. You should know the doctrine. You should know what you stand for. You should know your belief system. Somebody shout amen. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says that we are to be instant, in season, and out of season are you with me we are always to be able to answer those when the questions arise say amen somebody oh my god there are so many people they are just comfortable just comfortable coming to church just comfortable going through the motions that's why they're not being used by god but god has given you the greatest power in the world that you might emerge and do what god has called you to do shout amen somebody jesus called the church not just to sit back and relax and wait for the rapture bus but Jesus called us in Mark 16 and 15 to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation to preach the gospel and then he that believes and is baptized shall be saved but those that believeth not shall be condemned and these mighty miraculous signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils everybody shout amen they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means be able to hurt you that's the power that I possess do you see those clapping right now that are excited they possess the same power we need to be a God possessed generation if we're gonna leave a legacy and make a mark on this generation we have got to be possessed by Almighty God because if you're not by possessed by God and his power you're gonna be possessed by the spirits that are governing this world. I don't know about you, there's nothing in this world that I want more than Jesus. I want Jesus more than popularity. I want Jesus more, not like some of you just sitting there, than fame and fortune and riches. My God, I don't care if people ever know my name. I want them to know the name under heaven whereby men can be saved. The wonderful name of Jesus. At that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's who I'm here for tonight. I didn't come to please people. I came to please God. How about you? Make some noise. Give God some radical praise. Are you a bold witness for Jesus? Jesus gave each and every one of us a divine assignment to reach the world that is lost for him. Everybody shout, I have a divine assignment. Everybody shout, there's a mandate from heaven on my life. Shout amen, somebody. Every believer, I don't care how long you're saved, every believer is equipped, appointed, and anointed to turn the world upside down for Jesus. Shout amen, somebody. Paul and Barnabas, as well as Silas and the other apostles, they were equipped, my God. They were empowered, and they made a significant impact on the world around them. Shout amen, somebody. Many lives were transformed, but many were enraged. I said many lives were transformed 
bombed, but many were enraged. Are you listening to me? Look at chapter 14. You still have your iPhone out? You still have that Android? You need to get delivered from Androids and get an Apple iPhone. You need to understand this in Acts 14. It tells us the reason why there was a great division. Everybody say there's a reason for division. Everybody say there's always a cause for division. There's a reason. There's always a cause for division. There's always a purpose for division. How many of you know the enemy divides? How many of you know the enemy distance and divides to destroy people's lives? Say amen, somebody. Somebody shout amen. But how many of you know that Jesus, amen, said there would be an isolation and a separation from this world that we should distance ourselves from the ungodly and the wicked and the perverse in this world shout amen I'm going to preach this thing tonight I said I'm going to preach this thing tonight everybody shall preach pastor Kevin the Bible tells us the reason why there was division. Look at Acts 14. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas, going back to the 14th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. And Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual into the Jewish synagogue. Everybody said they went to church. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks, everybody say a great number of religious people, Everybody say the Jews and the Greeks. They believed what Paul and Barnabas had preached. But the Jews who refused. Everybody say the Jews refused. The Jews that refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds. That's very powerful right there. Everybody say they poisoned the other's minds. You better be careful who you're influencing. You better be careful what you're talking about. You better be careful when you put your tongue on an anointing anointed man or woman of God. Everybody shout amen. Everybody shout they poisoned other people. I'm preaching the way I feel this. Everybody shout they poisoned other people. The Bible says if you cause somebody to stumble, it would be better for you to put a stone around your neck and to be cast into the bottom of the sea. Tonight I'm preaching the word and the word of God is seed, but not all seed falls on good soil. What kind of soil are you tonight? Everybody say I hope I'm good soil because if this seed takes root in the soil of your heart it'll bring forth a mighty harvest in your life shout amen somebody in the house of God tell somebody be careful how you influence people tell somebody people are watching you tell them tell them tell them tell them tell them say people are watching and listening to you on your job they're watching you in your school they're watching you when you're in the shopping center they're watching you you better be careful how you represent the kingdom of God and the Lord Jesus Christ who you claim is the savior of your life Tell somebody they poisoned other people. They poisoned their minds against the Bible, says in the NIV, the brothers. Everybody say, the brothers. Paul entered the synagogue, and upon his arrival in Iconium, and he began to preach the gospel. Everybody shout, he preached the gospel. Everybody shout, there he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. His preaching made an impact, and a great multitude of Jews and Greeks believed. But thank God people were converted. Thank God he made friends. Everybody say he made friends and he also made a lot of enemies. In this journey of faith, you'll make friends and you'll also make enemies. Somebody shout amen. People that love you today will hate your guts tomorrow. That's people. Are you listening to me? The same people that Jesus healed a week later, they said, kill him, crucify him. Are you listening to me? Say amen, somebody. But there are two reasons for the division in Acts 14. When they preached the truth, when he preached the truth, the Bible says, when he preached the truth, there was a division. Everybody say the reason for division is that he preached, they preached, everybody say they preached, the truth. The word of God will divide. Say that with me. The word of God will divide. Isn't that what it says in the book of Hebrews? The word of God is a two-edged, double-edged sword. Amen. It divides bone and marrow and joints. Are you listening to me? The word of God will divide. You preach the truth of God, you'll make friends and you'll make enemies. Are you listening to me? Say amen. When a ministry makes an impact in a community, not only will people notice it, but hell will notice it. Somebody shout amen. 
the reason for the division the religious were enraged because people were quitting religion like today with all the nonsense that's going on in the Catholic Church many are quitting religion just like in the day of Paul and Barnabas and Paul and Silas and the apostles as they preached and as they taught the word of God and demonstrated God's mighty power many begin to forsake their religious upbringing to encounter genuine power can somebody shout a loud amen right now when, when he preached the truth they quit their religion in other words the religious leaders were enraged because they were no longer profiting from the people say amen they were no longer profiting amen you mess with somebody's money you're going to have a war so they, be, they begin to forsake their religious upbringing and begin to following the message of Christ are you listening to me say amen and they begin to quit to encounter the power of God. You know how many people over the years have come to this church that were raised in Catholicism and they knew God had more for them? Can you say amen? They didn't want religion. Religion will not satisfy you. But one touch from the mighty hand of God will change your life forevermore. Clap your hands and shout aloud. Praise the Lord. I'm going to say it again. They begin to preach. And the people in the community begin to notice the impact that they made. Not only did people in the community, not only did the people in the community recognize the impact and the difference that was being made, but the Bible tells us that the enemies, the ungodly and the wicked, amen, begin, my God, they were jealous and their mind was poisoned by the religious people. Somebody say amen. So the Bible tells us as you study this out, when he preached the truth, everybody shout, when you preach the truth, not everybody's going to like it. And it can bring division. Say amen, somebody. Somebody shout amen. The second reason for the division in Acts 14 is the Jews who rejected Jesus as the Messiah and the truth that Paul preached. Everybody say it created a division. Why? Because of the message Paul preached, they didn't like it. Can you say amen? And they were enraged because it went against the religious grain. Say amen. Somebody shout amen. The Jews who rejected Jesus as the Messiah and the truth that Paul preached, it created a division. Are you listening to me? Though, let me tell you something right now. The world hates our message. Somebody say the world hates our message. The religious don't like our message. Are you with me tonight? The wicked will do everything they can to stop us from preaching the gospel. But hear me please. Some of you that are here, a little naive. Let me educate you and help you tonight as your pastor, if I am your pastor. You think people really love you and celebrate you and they're going to be in your life forever? I challenge you to do something. I challenge you to share the truth with them and watch how they respond to you. Tell somebody, share the truth with somebody. Tell them and watch how they respond to you. Pastor, I don't know what happened. They always loved me. They were so nice to me. They always blessed me. They gave me gifts at work. They blessed me and took me out to lunch. But after I shared the truth with them, are you, oh my God, I'm preaching this to somebody right now. They wanted nothing to do with me anymore. The same thing that happened with Paul and Silas and Paul and Barnabas and the other men of God in that day of the early church. There will come a division when the truth is preached. The truth will separate the radical from the religious. Those that claim they love God and those that actually have an on-fire relationship with him. Somebody clap your hands, hallelujah, and shout amen right now. Jesus himself said, everybody say Jesus said, in Luke chapter number 12, I'm moving quickly, verse 51 and verse 52. Jesus said, do you think, Jesus speaking, do you think I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I've come to divide. 
people against each other. Put it on the screen. Is it up there? From now on, the King James, from now on, families will be split apart. Three in favor of me. And two against, or two against, or two in favor. And three against. Then he goes on to say, he says, mother will, daughter will be against mother. And son will turn against father. I'm talking about for the faith, people. I'm talking about for your relationship with God. If you think my God that it is unnatural for there be a division in your family when you represent the greatest kingdom in all the world the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the Bible says we're going to be hated we're going to be talked about people are going to persecute us for our faith if they did it to Jesus who do you think you are pastor I don't know why I'm going through this everybody used to like me I don't know what's going on there is a division Jesus has come to draw a line in the sand Whose side are you on? What team are you on? Somebody shout amen. What about you tonight? What are you going to do to turn the world upside down? We're always looking to Pastor Kevin or the evangelist or this preacher or that preacher or that prophet or this prophet. What are you going to do this year to turn the world upside down? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to preach and keep on preaching. I'm going to demonstrate and keep on demonstrating. I'm going to cast out devils. I'm going to work the works of God. I'm going to do what Jesus did. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. This is not a year. If you just come to sit, you will not survive another 12 months in this church. God is raising up an army. God is raising up a radical on fire remnant that will not sit back and watch people perish, but will stand out, speak up, Slap somebody a high five. Say, what are you going to do? Tell somebody, say, what are you going to do to turn the world upside down? John's Gospel. John's Gospel, chapter 7. So there was, verse 43. Say, there was a division among the people because of Jesus. Everybody say, there was a division. I don't understand why my family's falling apart. There was a division. I don't know why people don't call me anymore, pastor, or message me anymore. The Bible says there will come a division. Not from the devil, from God. God is excluding you to protect you. God is excluding you and removing you from certain relationships because God is getting ready to catapult you to a whole new dimension. Somebody shout hallelujah right now. I'm here to tell you get ready because there are, I'm here to help you. I want to encourage you, but I want you to remember this word. There are people that are in your life today that may not be in your life in a week from now because of Jesus there was a division. There will be a division when you make up your mind. You're going to stand up and shine bright for the Lord Jesus Christ. When you make up your mind, no more lukewarm living, no more compromise, no more carnality, you'll find out who really loves you. I've never seen anything like this before. The time that we're living in. There are so many in this hour that have compromised the truth for the approval and the acceptance of some people. Many have caved in to the pressures of society. They have conformed to the culture, abandoning the truth of the gospel. Say amen, somebody. Many have caved in. Many that used to say they were warriors have become cowards. Many that used to stand on the front line and lead have now become weak followers. God did not call me to be a fan. He called me to be a follower. I feel like preaching. 
he didn't call me to be a fan he didn't save me and anoint me to be a celebrity he anointed appointed and called me and equipped me that I need to reach souls as long as I'm living I'm gonna preach the gospel as long as I've got breath I'm gonna share the love of Jesus I'm gonna shine bright in darkness I'm gonna be the light that God has called me to be see some of you say you're that but you're a fake tell somebody scream at them say it's serious turn the world upside down tell them right now in America you start preaching an uncompromised word there will be opposition not just in the, from the world opposition in the church they poison the minds of the other people and turn them against the men of God. Are you with me? The gospel creates contention. Say that with me, the gospel. Everybody say the true gospel. Everybody say the uncompromising gospel creates contention. It'll create contention in a church. It'll create contention in your family. It'll create contention in your home. Everybody say the true gospel. I feel the Holy Ghost so strong here tonight. The true gospel creates contention. See, hear me. Listen up. When you're committed to stand up for the truth of God's word and you really preach Jesus as the only means or the only way of salvation. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way. Say with me. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Well, pastor, I want, I want to share with you my opinion. I don't care about your opinion. I've received a word from Jesus. He's the only way. He is the only truth. He is the life. Are you listening to me? Say amen. You need to realize this tonight. When you preach the uncompromised truth of God's word, the only way of salvation, and confront perverted lifestyles that are contrary to the word of God, guess what get ready you can expect an attack and there will be division say amen but there is a reason the second reason for the division in the book of Acts 14 are you still with me everybody all right I'm the one working put a smile on your face and receive what I'm serving Acts 14 it says this in verse 2 everybody say but the Jews everybody say they refused those that refuse to believe my god i'm going to preach this now everybody say those who refuse to believe they stirred up the others they influenced the other gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers are you with me the rebellious say with me the rebellious everybody say that's not me because i'm here tonight ready to receive the word of God everybody say the rebellious say the disobedient say the religious turned on the apostles yeah they turned somebody said well pastor you know I thought my I thought my brother would always love me my sister in the church would always be my best friend well that's why you should be closer to nobody like Jesus shout amen somebody I found out you correct somebody, it's their, they'll turn into a pit bull in a corner and bite your hand off because they've not grown spiritually in the time that they've been attending this church. I don't care how long you worship, how much scripture you know, when God speaks, are you quick to obey and respond? Come on in accordance with his plan for your very life. I don't care how gifted you are. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how talented you are. Are you submitted to speak? spiritual authority jump up if you are and I want to see who's sitting so I, I've discovered who's not get up and praise God in this place if you are submitted to spiritual authority everybody say they turned on the men of God they turned on the apostles they poison the minds of other people. Amen. Satan, the Bible says, has come to blind the eyes of many. 
Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And then we're going to take this home. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. Are you ready? Yes. Satan. Say that word, Satan. Yes. Well, I don't want to say it. I'm afraid he'll hear me. He already knows you're a coward. He already knows you're fearful of him. Everybody say, Satan. Yes. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. They're unable to see the glorious light. Say with me, they're unable. It's not that they don't try. It's not that they can't. They're not po it's not possible. They're unable. They're blinded. There's blinders on their eyes. They're unable to see the glorious light. Everybody say the glorious light. From the front to the back there in your couch at home, say the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ who is the exact likeness to God. Shout amen. Many are blinded to the truth. Everybody say many are blinded to the truth. I don't mind working with blind people. Many are blinded to the truth, but others oppose it. Big difference. Big difference between being deaf spiritually, blind spiritually, than from another person that opposes the truth intentionally. They come to church, they oppose the truth. The power of God is moving, they resist the Holy Ghost. The conviction is falling like rain in a service and they refuse to humble themselves and repent. They oppose the truth. They mock the gospel with their lifestyles. You cannot have joy when you mock the gospel. You cannot have a peace-filled family and disobey those that God has placed over you for your spiritual progress, development, and benefit. Shout amen, somebody. In the midst of a division and great opposition, Paul stood up. I love Paul. He stood up and he continued to preach. Everybody say, he continued. There was opposition. The opposition didn't deter him. He continued to preach. Say it with me. He continued to preach. They were screaming at him, mocking him. He continued to preach. Say amen. Tell somebody, keep on preaching. He continued to preach the gospel without compromise. Say amen. Everybody say without compromise. He didn't change his message because people didn't agree with it. Let me say it again. He didn't change his message because people did not agree with it. He kept on preaching. Tell somebody, preach on. Tell them, preach on. They may not like you, preach on. They may talk about you, preach on. They try to destroy you, preach on. They try to ruin your cred credentials, preach on. They try to destroy your character and your integrity with their tongue, preach on. Tell somebody, we got to keep on preaching. The hour is short. What we do for Christ, we must do quickly. But we got to work while it is day, for night cometh when no man shall be able to work. Shout amen, somebody. Paul continued to preach the gospel without compromise. He didn't change his message because people did not like it. He didn't change his message, pay attention, because people didn't agree with it. Are you listening to me? He was committed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Give us some Christians. Give us some people at Jesus' Lord Church that will be committed to share their faith, share their testimony, and preach the gospel and care less what anybody says about them. Shout amen. Paul remained faithful in spite of the division and the opposition. Look at verse 3 of Acts 14. I love this. Yet Paul and Barnabas stayed there for a long time. Everybody say a long time. Preaching boldly and fearlessly about the Lord. Many trusted in the Lord, for he backed up the message. 
Everybody say he could back it up. He backed up the message of grace with miracles, signs, and wonders performed by the apostles. He could back it up. You cannot demonstrate what you don't have. You cannot give that what you do not possess. He was able to back it up. Everybody shout, back it up. Tell somebody he was able to back it up. See, there's a lot of people, they share their testimony, but they can't back it up. God has given us power. God has given us authority. God has given us power. God has given us authority. God has given us power. God has given us authority. In my name you shall cast out devils. Preach the gospel. Lay hands on the sick. Do the works of God. Not even the works that he did, John 14, but even greater works. Because I go to my Father. If we're going to do greater works, we need an encounter with greater power. Shout amen, somebody. a lot of people can preach but they can't perform miracles because they don't flow in that anointing miracles do not come from the hand of man miracles are activated and released through the hand of God through men shout amen somebody no matter what remain faithful to your calling Every one of us have a calling. Everybody shout, I have a calling. Everybody in this room, those online, say, I'm called by God. Say, I'm anointed by God. Say, I'm equipped by God. Say, I'm empowered by the Holy Ghost. I'm going to be faithful to my calling. I'm going to be faithful to my calling in the good times, in the bad times, in times of celebration, in times of devastation. I'm going to be faithful to my calling. Not everybody in this room could say that. I know that. And if you say it, you don't even understand what you're saying. But God has called us, no matter what he's called you to do, to finish it. Amen. Everybody shout, I'm a finisher. Those that endure unto the end shall be saved. Paul was a fighter. I love Paul. Paul lived his life without reservations and without retreats. Paul was the one in 2 Timothy 4, 7 that gave us a complete summary and biography of his life and ministry. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. Say with me, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I've kept the faith. Paul said, awaits for me a crown of righteousness that soon shall appear with crown of unfading glory. Shout amen, somebody. Everybody shout, I'm gonna finish my course with joy. Tell somebody, no matter what, Remain faithful to your calling. Mm -hmm. Paul refused to compromise the message. He preached the gospel wherever he went. He said this, I come unto you not with enticing words of man's wisdom. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, the fourth and the fifth verse. I come unto you not with enticing plausible words of man's wisdom or influence or intellect, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Shout amen. But that your faith would not stand in my wisdom or the wisdom of any man, but in the power of Almighty God. Everybody shout amen. This is still a gospel of power. Say amen. Everybody shout thank God. It's a gospel of power. If it wasn't a gospel of power, when you get sick, you would die from your sickness. But this is still a gospel of power. It's still a gospel of deliverance. For Jesus came to preach deliverance unto the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind. Everybody shout it's still a gospel of power. If you are an addict, Jesus can set you free. If you're brokenhearted, Jesus can heal you. If you're tormented, he can release a flood of peace in your direction. It's still a gospel of power. He keeps those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on them. He is still, it is still a gospel of power. He said, I've given you the power to get wealth. Shout amen, somebody. Tell somebody, I refuse to compromise. You're going to be tested this week. You'll be tested. If you're really full of God or full of yourself when people are around. Paul refused to compromise the message. He said, this word is not just mere word only. 
But the word of God consists in power and in demonstration. Say amen, somebody. Romans 1.16, if you don't know it, get saved. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also unto the Greek. Shout amen, somebody. This gospel started with power and we're going to finish with power. This church started with power and powerful people. And this church, when we're raptured, we're going up in power. Shout amen, somebody. You were saved by power and we're going to glory in power. Shout amen in the house of God. Paul refused to water down the message. Paul refused to compromise with carnal Christians. He did not change the message just because the crowd changed. I told you weeks ago, I am responsible, watch this, and I am accountable to preach the gospel without compromise. Whether it fills this church or whether it empties this church, I will stand before God and I will hear well done shout if you don't feel that you don't got what I got shout out of your belly he preached in Athens he preached in power he preached the uncompromised word of God. In Athens, Paul preached in the intellectual capital of the world. And he was mocked. Say he was mocked. If you think you're a Christian and you refuse to be laughed at and you don't think people will mock you, then you are still alive and you have got to die. Listen to me. I'm talking about dying to your flesh and dying to your feelings and dying to to your own godly desires. Paul preached in the capital of the world in Athens. He was mocked. Say he was mocked. He preached in Jerusalem in the religious capital of the world and he was attacked and he was beaten. Say amen. He preached in Rome the political capital of the world and he was martyred. Are you listening to me? Whether they celebrated him or they tried to destroy him Paul did not change his mind concerning Christ I don't know about you God has done so much for me I'm not changing my conviction to please people I've made up my mind I'm going all the way shout amen I'm not preaching tonight to please people. I'm preaching tonight because God is pleased with my life in the middle of a divided city. There was a dedicated people. Shout it with me in the middle of a divided city in Acts 14. There was still a dedicated people get that in your spirit in the midst of contention and division there was still a dedicated people that wanted to preach and share their faith if you're going to finish if you're going to complete your course as a Christian you've got to be dedicated and determined that you're never gonna give up and you're never gonna quit I don't know about you, no matter what storms come my way, no matter people love me, celebrate me, try to destroy me, ruin my credibility, I'm not quitting the faith, because God has been better to me than I've ever been to myself. I wish somebody would get out on your feet, shake off that lukewarm spirit, and shout hallelujah right now. Well, pastor, I'm under an attack. Let me help you. Opposition is an indication you're in the will of God right now. What was the motivation? What was the motivation in Paul's life? 
Opposition. Opposition. I love opposition. Personally, I love it. I love good opposition. It makes me more determined and dedicated. Everybody say opposition was the driving force in Paul's life. Paul said he fought hell. He said, I fought the very beast, Satan. I fought, the, I fought, I fought hell at Ephesus. Everybody say opposition was the driving force in Paul's ministry. Uh -huh. He said, everything I've been through, none of these things move me. Neither do I count my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course with great joy. Everybody shout great joy. You're not finishing this race defeated and discouraged and depressed. You're going to finish this course with great joy. You're not leaving this world broke. You're leaving this world blessed. You're not leaving this place empty. You're leaving this place overflowing. to manifest his power if you remain obedient and submitted to his will let me say that again God is obligated to manifest his power when you remain obedient and submitted to his will one more time for those that may not hear correctly God's obligated to manifest his power when you remain submitted committed obedient to his will the devil will do everything he can to try to silence you. Nobody's shutting my mouth. The devil's not shutting my mouth. The world can't silence us. Your enemies cannot silence us. Shout amen, somebody. The wicked cannot silence us. The devil cannot silence us. It's time for the church to stand up. When the Holy Ghost came down, the first thing Peter did was stand up and lift his voice and preach. And 3,000 souls were saved. You don't have the Holy Ghost to sit down like everybody else. Who's going to stand up for Jesus? Who's going to shine bright for him in this hour? Who's going to be a living testimony of his goodness? Shout amen, somebody. Opposition was the motivation in Paul's life. Do you, do you have a clue? Does anybody have a clue what Paul went through? Does... does does anybody on YouTube, Facebook, social media, does anybody in this room have a clue what Paul went through? If you've ever studied the life of the Apostle Paul, could I see your hand? Have you ever studied the life of the Apostle Paul? Do you know what he went through? Raise your hand if you know what Paul went through. If you read your Bible, you should have your hand raised. What did he go through? He was beaten. He was betrayed. He was shipwrecked. He was bitten by a snake. He was abandoned by his friends. He was persecuted. He preached. He preached in Lystra. Everybody say, he preached. They took him. They dragged him outside a city. They stoned him. They threw boulders at his skull. They thought he was dead. Here he is. I can see the disciples coming around saying he died too young. His ministry just started. But all of a sudden, Paul's eye popped open. He goes, cancel the funeral. I'm still here, and I'm still alive. Are you listening to me tonight? I'm here to tell you you're not done, and God is not finished with you yet. God is about to use you in a mighty way in this last day, harvest of souls. Shout amen, somebody. Shout hallelujah, somebody. And Paul wasn't like most people. He got back up, dug himself out of the boulders that he was buried alive under, and he went back into the same city. The same city that they stoned him. He went back again and preached again. Shout, I'm going to preach on. He, he didn't go. He didn't go back to Antioch to lick his wounds. He didn't stay home from church for a week because he felt sorry for himself. 
He didn't go run off to Iconium. He didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't run to, he didn't go anywhere else. He didn't go to Derby. He went right back and preached to the same people that tried to kill him. Do I have any warriors on Long Island anymore? I've got to ask the question. If you're a warrior, stand up and shout like you're a warrior. Because warriors don't whisper. War for warriors release a cry. Hey! Slap somebody a high five and say you don't even have a clue who you're standing next to. You don't know the hell I survived to get here. You don't know the pain I had to fight through to get where I am tonight. Somebody shout amen. You and I, we're about to turn Long Island upside down. We're about to see Long Island shaken by God's mighty power. Shout him in somebody. This ain't a quitting season. This is a promotion season. Shout! He refused to abandon his calling. Stoned, left for dead, Paul refused to quit. How many of you ever thought about quitting? You're still here, shout. You're breathing, give God a praise as loud as you can. You're still here, you're still alive. Make up your mind right now, you're gonna praise them harder. You're gonna shout harder. You're gonna worship harder. Shout amen somebody right now. Open up your mouth and give God a praise anyway. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Let the redeemed of the Lord praise him. Let the redeemed of the Lord praise him. Tell somebody never quit. You may have felt like quitting, never quit. You may have thought about quitting, never quit. Because winners never quit and quitters never win. Shout, 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 shout. You're too close to quit. Jesus had come at any moment. Why would you give up? Why would you go back to your sin? Why would you return to the lifestyle that God delivered you from? I made up my mind. I will fight the good fight. I will finish my course. I will keep the faith. I'm not going to give up. I'm pressing in and I will receive my reward. Give God a praise right now. ways to turn the world upside down. Number one, surrender your will to God's purpose. Amen. I'm talking to world changes. How many world changes do I have? Really? You have one soul in your life. Stop playing games. You're a world changer, huh? We talk about world changes. People think of money, material, and success. Wrong. It takes money to do what God has called this church to do, and it takes money to fulfill your God-given dream and purpose. I'm talking about eternal perspective tonight, an eternal mindset. I'm driven by eternity. I'm driven by eternity. The time some of you people have on your hands, you should be winning more souls than anybody else in this community. Everybody shout, I'm driven by eternity. Uh-huh, nothing else matters to Kevin McGinnis. I'm driven by eternity. Number one, how many of you want to turn the world upside down? Everybody shout, I must surrender. Come on, say it, I must surrender. Everything. Uh -huh. Your desire, your plan, your ide ideology, your dream. Surrender your will to God's purpose. Are you surrendered? I'm not talking about perfection. There's nobody perfect, including me. I got many faults in my life. God uses imperfect people Amen. to do an eternal work for him. 
Clap your hands and shout amen if you're glad you're here tonight and didn't stay home like most. Throw your hands up. Say, Lord, I surrender everything. How many of you want to turn the world upside down? Throw your hands up and say, Lord, I surrender you, my will to your purpose for my life. Second way you turn the world upside down. Are you ready? You got to preach the word. Not your opinion. Preach the word. Not what you feel people need to hear. Pastor, what a powerful preacher this one is. They're not even anointed. They're a motivational speaker. There's a big difference between being anointed to break chains from a motivational speaker. My father used to say that to me all the time. So-and-so thinks they have such an incredible ministry and all they are is a motivational speaker. Nothing wrong with motivational speeches. Nothing wrong with having a life coach, whatever that means. I got the word of God. This is my life coach. The word of God is my life coach. Shout amen, somebody. Preach the word. Share your testimony. The word will turn the world upside down. Acts 4.4, 4, but many of those who had heard the word believed. And the number of men came to about 5,000 souls. Acts 6, 7, and the word of God continued to increase. And the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. Number three, I'm moving quick. The third way to turn the world upside down is to have a divine demonstration of God's power. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Say with me, signs. Wonders and miracles. Listen to what Paul said. 1 Corinthians 4.20, the NIRV. Paul said, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk. It's a matter of power. It's, 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 not, it's not about talking. It's about demonstrating. Thank God for people that teach the word of God and preach the word of God. But... You could teach all day long. Demonstrate. Demonstrate the gospel. The kingdom of God is not a matter of talk. It's a matter of power. Everybody say it's a matter of power. Not just talk. You could teach people all day long. If they don't counter the power of the Holy Ghost, it's just another word. you got to mix the word of God with your spirit and your faith. The word of God did not profit them, having not been mixed with faith, the Bible says. Some people, all they do is talk. Talk is cheap! Ladies, come on, you know that. I love you, baby. I'll buy you anything. They're gone in a month. I'll be with you forever. I'll be there for you through thick and thin. When you got thick, they left. Amen, Jalen. Shout amen, somebody. For better or worse. For rich or for poor, sickness and in health. Amen. I thought it was one of the Ghostbusters sitting on the organ. I turned around, all I saw was a head. Talk is cheap. The Bible says, even to our own hurt, we're to keep our word. Oh, this generation knows nothing about this. The church generation today knows nothing about this. You give your word, it's supposed to be unto death. You make a covenant in wedding vows, it's supposed to be until death. That's why God says, I hate divorce. It's not unforgivable. Take it easy. Don't stone me like Paul. God forgives and God restores. 
Shout amen, somebody. He's not just the God of the second chance. He's the God of the 10,000 chance. But don't take the grace of God and continue in a lifestyle of ungodliness and rebellion against the word of God because you refuse to take discipline over your flesh. Shout amen, somebody. This ain't an hour to talk. It's time to demonstrate the gospel. And that's what's going to draw people all over Long Island and the nation to this house because we're not going to be a bunch of talkers. We're going to be Holy Ghost demonstrators. Shout amen, somebody. the fourth way to turn the world upside down everybody say through discipleship everybody say discipleship that's what the leadership does we're always discipling people calling people challenging people sharing the word with people believing for, with people standing in faith for people everybody say through discipleship we're going to turn the world upside down Acts 2.42 also Acts 19, as soon as 3,000 Jews got saved, when did that happen? On the day of Pentecost? Say 3,000 souls were saved. What was the next step? What immediately happened next? They were put through a process of learning the apostles' doctrine. Everybody say a process of learning. If you are not learning in this church, it is not my fault. It is not the leader's fault. You're the one to blame. Of course, you're not applying yourself. I've memorized about 900 verses now. Something I just was determined to do when I was young, started preaching. There are many that have memorized a lot more than me. Hundreds of verses, hundreds. Because I want to go to the next level of learning. How many of you want to go to the next level of learning? Before you learn anything else in this world, learn the word. Because the word of God has the power to save your soul. See, we want to learn to develop and succeed in the brief years we have on this earth. How about preparing yourself for it forever, eternity? How many of you want to learn to go to the next level? We've got to make disciples. We've, every one of us are called. If, how many of you have been saved five years or more? How many of you saved ten years or more? You should be making disciples. You should be winning the lost every single week. Say amen, somebody. Number five, and I'm almost there, three more. Praying fervently will turn the world upside down. Number six, speak boldly. Number seven, love unconditionally. And number eight, for the Great Commission, give generously. Clap your hands, everybody, and give God praise. Here it is. How many of you surrendered everything to God? <laughs> Pastor, I'm going to surrender this, but I can't surrender that. You're not surrendered. If the Lord told you today to go to the Middle East and be a missionary, would you go, leave everything behind? You're not surrendered. There are things in our lives that we want to hold on to. But this is what I know about God. If you can give it up, you can have it all. Everything you want, the desires of your heart, God does not want to withhold anything from anyone. Psalm 84, 11, the Lord God is a son. He is a shield. He gives grace. He gives glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. How does this all happen? Seek, aim, strive after. First of all, the kingdom of God and his way of doing things. And all these other things shall be added unto you. When I speak with people or I sit down to encourage or counsel people, the first thing I ask every one of them is, how much time do you spend every day in prayer? 
How much time do you spend watching television? How much time on your phone? How much time with friends? How much time do you spend in the word with Jesus? Of course, if you are not feeding your spirit, you will ultimately starve to death. Anything you stop talking to ultimately dies. You have a relationship with somebody, if you stop talking to them, the relationship will ultimately die. You stop talking to your family, the relationship can be terminated. You stop speaking to your girlfriend, the relationship will die. Anything you stop talking to will die. Every day, I cannot live, I can't live. Maybe you can, I can't. I can't live without spending time with God. I heard about maybe 15, 16 people. I can't live without spending time with God. Somebody said, well, is he your crutch? No, he's my rock. He's my rock. Everything in my life is built upon him. Without him, I would fall apart. Well, that seems like weak faith. No, 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 no. The Bible says in the book of Colossians, by him, everything in my life consists. So if God withdraws, I fall to the floor. I can't live without Jesus. Some of you used to live like that. But the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life has affected your relationship with Christ. How many of you say, I love Jesus more than anything in this world? Be careful. Liars go to hell. How many of you want to go to heaven? Get honest with yourself. Take a look in the mirror of God's word and say, God, nobody else is the problem. I'm the problem. The Bible says examine yourself to see if you're even in the faith. Jesus said, when I return to the people planet, will I find any faith on the earth? I want to turn the world upside down. And I believe in the coming years that we will see the greatest harvest of souls come through the doors of this church. How many of you are going to help me turn the world upside down? Prophecies that were given to you years ago, they're coming to pass. Somebody said, when is God going to do it? Well, God is not, stop waiting on God. God's waiting on you to move. God's waiting on you to help somebody that's hurting. God's waiting on you to lay hands on somebody that's sick. God's waiting on you to cast out a devil. God's waiting on you to reach somebody else's son and daughter and he's going to divinely orchestrate a divine appointment for somebody to minister to your son and daughter. Turn the world. These men have turned the world upside down. Let me end with this. How Sharon, how are we going to turn the world upside down if the church is not right side up? How are we going to reach people that are broken if we're broken? How are we going to break chains off people if we come to church and shout but we're still living in chains secretly sin? How are we going to reach those in darkness, Thomas, if we're living in darkness? Mike, how are we going to shine bright when we refuse to repent and change our lifestyle? We're not going to turn the world upside down. We're just lying to ourselves. It's time for the church to be turned right side up. Clap your hands and give God praise. We're coming out of the world. We're separating ourselves. We're not touching the unclean thing. We're living free from sin. Shout amen, somebody. We're living free from rebellion. We're living free from disobedience. We're going to serve God, and we're going to put our confidence in him every day of our lives. Shout amen, somebody. Do I have any radical people? Do I have at least five people that will stand with me and say, I'm going to turn the world upside down? I received prophecy over my life that God has anointed me for a specific assignment and I'm not giving up. I'm going to turn the world upside down. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. That's why the devil tried to destroy you. 
That's why you went back to sin and you backslid years ago. The devil tried to take you out because he knew the mighty hand of God was on your life. Shout! No, shout! Remain standing. Bow your head. Oh, Father, I ask you for a revival of boldness. Give us a revival of boldness. Give us a revival of boldness. You've not given us a spirit of fear. You've given us a spirit of power, love, a sound mind. The wicked run away, not the righteous. The wicked run from a battle, not the righteous. For the wicked flee when no man chases them, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. I pray, Lord, for an increase of boldness in this church. That when people speak stupid, we'd speak up and say, be quiet, shut up. When people speak nonsense, we will speak the truth in love. Father, I pray that you'd put a holy hunger in your hearts of your people, the hearts of your church, that you'd put a hunger down in their heart for more of you, that you'd put a burning desire in their heart for more of you, that you'd give them passion, let them get their passion back. Father, I pray that you restore passion to people in this church, that you'd restore passion, God, the passion they once had. Lord, that you'd restore that passion as David cried out in repentance, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Father, I pray for those that are lukewarm, those that are living worldly. Lord, I pray that they would repent tonight, that they would come clean before you. You know everything. You see everything. We cannot hide from you. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're right there. We can't escape you. You see everything. You're the all-knowing, all-seeing God. As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you say, Pastor Kevin, I've been lacking passion. I've been lacking desire. I've been lacking the fire of God. Honestly, I don't care who you are. I could call people out, but that's not going to work. You've got to acknowledge your own ways. You've got to take responsibility for your actions. You've got to realize that every action has a consequence, that every decision has a repercussion. God does not violate his word. God does not contradict his word. As you're here tonight, as your head is bowed and your eyes are closed, say, Pastor Kevin, tonight I acknowledge. I acknowledge that I want to be a world changer. I want to turn the world upside down. I want to be a history maker. I want to be a history maker. I want to be a world changer. I want to turn the world upside down. I want to make an impact on this generation. And it's not just going to be mere words, but I'm going to begin to do things I've never done before for God. And tonight I wanted to begin by igniting a new God, igniting a new fire by the Spirit of God in my heart. Tonight I acknowledge that I've been lacking passion. I've been lacking passion. Coming to church, but I've been lacking passion. Powerful messages preached, but I've been lacking passion. It's not nobody else's fault. I'm the man to blame. I'm the woman to blame. I own it. I own it. I take responsibility for it. And tonight I want to get it right. On the count of three, I want you to lift your hands. One, two, three. Put your hands up. Put them up. You've been lacking passion. You've been lacking passion. Put your hands down. Everybody raise both your hands in this place as your head is bowed before God. And say, Lord, tonight I ask you to give me a burning desire 
to seek you like never before in prayer, in the word, in worship, in church attendance, in evangelism, in reaching the hurting, helping the broken, restoring the backslidden. Give me a burning desire to turn the world upside down. Everybody say, I repent for any known compromise in my life. Tonight, Holy Ghost, reveal it to me, expose it, show me the error of my ways, and Lord, help me to make the changes by the Spirit of God. Because in my own strength, I am not capable of making the changes that are necessary. But I will yield my members, my flesh, to the Spirit of God. And I will never be the same again. I will turn the world upside down for Jesus in this last day. Now, if that's you and you really believe the prayer you've prayed, everybody clap your hands as loud as you can and shout with great joy. Shout with great joy. Shout with great joy. Shout with great joy. Hallelujah. Keep shouting. Keep clapping. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You're here tonight. As you're clapping, keep clapping. Keep celebrating. This is a celebration. Every time we come to church, it is a celebration. Keep clapping. Keep celebrating. Keep worshiping. Keep rejoicing. I love you, Jesus. I love you more than ever before. I want more of you than I've ever needed you before. God, I want more. Fill me to overflowing tonight. Use me in a mighty way to reach souls for eternity. Burn in my heart. Let your fire burn in my spirit like never before. Hallelujah. Everybody worship God all over this room, all over the room, all over the room. Worship Him. As you're worshiping, keep worshiping Him. If you have any pain in your body, I want you to immediately come to the center of this altar. And I want to pray for you. If you have pain in your body, come now in Jesus' name. You need prayer. Come quickly, quickly come. Come in faith believing. Come in faith believing. Come in faith believing. Come in faith believing. Anyone else? There are many more than two people. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the faith of Almighty God, we agree and touch in faith. Lord, I'm asking you now to activate your healing power through her entire body right now in Jesus' mighty name from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Lord, I thank you for touching her ankles, her knees, her hips, her bones. Lord, strengthen her bones in Jesus' name. Touch every area in the bloodstream, circulation in the name of Jesus. Do it now, Lord, by your power. In Jesus' name, I thank you right now. Lord, as she has come believing, I'm asking you, God, right now, release your healing power into her body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. I thank you for resurrection power. I thank you for resurrection power. In Jesus' name, you said the prayer of faith will save the sick, and you would raise us up. Everybody in this room, stretch your hands towards this altar as I pray for those that are in need. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. Right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, no more. In the name of Jesus. I command it, go and never come back. In the name of Jesus, I command it to go and never come back. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty, everybody pray in other tongues. Receive it now, receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Now, 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 in Jesus' name. 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 There it is. Somebody got it. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it now by faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Everybody stretch your hands toward heaven. Right now, just worship Him from the depths of your soul. Right now, with all of your heart, give Him the highest praise. Go ahead. 
go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Somebody bless him. Somebody praise him. Somebody honor him. Somebody glorify him. With your hands raised and your mouths filled with praise, glorify your king. He's worthy. He's worthy. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's somebody that may be watching you. Maybe you're here. You've been having difficulty swallowing. I want you to come quickly. Difficulty swallowing. Seems like there's something in your throat. Who is that? Who is that? Seems like sometimes you're being choked. Who is it? Maybe it was you. Come quickly. Somebody else online I feel this for. Receive it now, right now, the mighty power of God. Be healed in Jesus' name. Right now, when I touch you, no more. I command all manner of sickness, get out and never come back. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Glory. Glory to God. Lift your hands and give him glory. Come on. Come on. Press in. Press in. Press in. Press in. Lord, fill this house with your glory. Beginning tonight, Lord, let it explode on Sunday morning. Let there be an explosion in this place. Let there be an explosion of your power. An explosion of miracles, an explosion of healing, an explosion of salvation. In Jesus' name, everybody in this room, lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. I send the word to you online. Receive what you're expecting and believing for. Now in Florida, be healed. In California, be healed. Colorado, be healed. Somebody in Naples, Florida is being healed right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I command healing be released to Missouri. Healing released to Chicago. Healing released, Lord, to the Dakotas in Jesus' name. I thank you for miracles right now across the nation. Miracles across the nation and around the world. Can somebody lift your voice? Somebody lift your voice. Somebody lift your voice. I feel it moving now. There's a shifting in the atmosphere. Hey, 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 there's a shifting in the atmosphere. There's a shifting in the atmosphere. Open up your mouth. I told you last week there's glory in your mouth. When you open up your mouth and release it, the glory of God's going to invade your situation. Whatever you've been praying for, open your mouth and the glory's coming out. The glory's coming out into your health. The glory's coming into your finances. The glory's coming into your home, your relationships. The glory of God, release it from your mouth. Release it from your mouth. When they begin to sing, the Lord is good, his mercy endureth forever. When they begin to worship, the glory of God fell. Open up your mouth and give him praise. Give him praise. Somebody's pelvis is being healed. Somebody's pelvis is being healed. Somebody has nerve damage through the pelvis area. The Lord says it's being healed. It's being healed. There's been numbness. It's being healed. In Jesus' name, I feel the power of God. I feel the anointing of God for the supernatural. Some of you are believing for your family to be saved. The Lord says if you open up your mouth, they will come. If you call them, they will come this Sunday. They will come. They will come. They will come. They shall be delivered. They shall be restored. They shall be saved in Jesus' name. Lift your voice. Give him glory. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will. Devil, you will not have our family. Devil, you will not have the young people of this island. Devil, take your hands off. We claim the generation. We claim this generation for the kingdom of Almighty God. Shout amen somebody. Just like Esther, God has called you and I to turn the world upside down. 
just like Daniel, God has called you and I to turn the world upside down. God has called us into the kingdom for such a time as this. Praise his holy name. I'm trying to get some of you to the next level. Praise his holy name. I'm trying to push some of you a little further out of the boat. Praise his holy name. Shambra Kore Bebasan. Kande la bokovre bebeshi. Karamanda Kore Bianda. Somebody's watching me right now. You've been dealing, you've been dealing with. You've been dealing with. You've been dealing with pneumonia. And the Lord is healing you tonight. Matter of fact, the person that's watching, you're not even the one with the pneumonia. It's somebody connected with your family. And the Lord said, now healing comes to you. It's coming to them through you, through your faith. As you stand in a proxy, you stand in agreement. Somebody's eyesight is being healed. I feel this. Somebody's vision is being healed. Somebody's cataracts are melting. God is melting cataracts off eyeballs. God is healing glaucoma. I wish somebody would scream. Scream for somebody's healing. Well, that's foolish. That's what the Bible says. He takes the foolish things to confound the wise. That's why I shout. That's why I scream. That's why I preach. That's why I pray. That's why I prophesy. Because people call it foolish. But this is what will change the world. This is what will turn the world upside down. Somebody pray boldly. Somebody speak boldly. Somebody pray fervently. Somebody love unconditionally. Somebody give and praise generously. man 40 years of old 40 years old down to 18 years old come now everybody keep praising God 40 to 18 I don't care where you are or what you're doing come up here stand right in front of me 40 to 18 the power of God's coming on you in a whole new dimension a whole new dimension Come on, come on, come on. Ashamande de Bahia. Arrababa, son, it's still on you. Some of you, the devil lied and said you lost it, but God said it's still on you. It's still on you. The hand of God. <laughs> the hand of God. The power of God. The anointing of God. It's still on you. When I touch you, it's going to grow. And when I touch you, it's going to intensify. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. Lift your hands if you're expecting. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Get them up. Get them up. Lift your hands all the way up. Real men worship God. Real men praise God. Shandira Bahasa. Fire right now, right now in your belly. Fire of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost. Ghost. Hashabahaya, there it is, there it is. Fire like never before. Receive it, open up to it, receive it, open your spirit. 
fire, 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 fire like never before. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Assignments tonight. Everybody lift your hands and pray as loud as you can for another 60 seconds. If there's any other men that want what I have, come up here. If there's any other men that want what I have, come up here. Shinde Randa My God, I want more. I don't know about you. I want more. I want more. I'm not settled. I'm not satisfied. I want more. Any other men, come up here if you want this. Rinde Bostanda. Randeshia. I want more. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. 
This is not for you. But if you want more of God, the time is now and the hour is here. Come now. Glory to the Sota Mahaya. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Release a double portion. Release a double portion. Release a double portion. Release it! All right, Holy Ghost pile up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what you call an avalanche. Amen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lift your hands. I command all fear. Say every spirit of fear. Get off of her. Tonight. She's leaving free. We're facing the fear. We're facing the fear. We're defeating fear. She's free tonight. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes. 
Let her not be like the rest. Let her not be satisfied with the world and the things of this world. Put a burning passion in her heart for you, Lord. Put a burning passion in her heart. In Jesus' name. And lift your hands all the way up. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every chain is being broken off your mind. Tonight, you're being free. You're being liberated. Your mind. I see the enemy's hand being cut off your mind. The enemy's hand. He's, he's had a stranglehold on your mind. And the Lord says tonight, it's been broken. It's been broken. Fire the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost.
You can take this whole world, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world, oh, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world, oh, but give me Jesus. No time. Sing it one more time. You can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world, oh, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world. take this whole world. I want to hear it again. You can take this whole world, but give me Jesus. If you mean that, sing it. You can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole Take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world.
when you're ready. However you're sewing electronically or the old-fashioned way, come and bring your offering. Everyone should be texting their very best. This atmosphere that is electrified with power. Sow into this anointing. You watch what God does for you. You watch how God returns it and multiplies your seed of sacrifice. For you will lack for nothing. You will lack for nothing. If you're a giver and not a taker, if you're a tither and not a taker, you will lack for nothing. You will lack for nothing. Everybody worship him in your giving. Everybody online, right there. There's a lady watching me right now. I feel this again. You're in Florida. As you sow that seed tonight, the money that you need for your home, God is going to put it in your hands supernaturally. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is everybody giving? Has everybody given? If you have, slip your hand up. You, Everyone has something to give. Everyone has something to give. If you have those envelopes, you can bring them whoever you're giving. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Online, we love you. Have a great night. I believe you were blessed by today's message. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms so you can stay connected to all that's happening right here at Jesus is Lord Church. Olga and I would love to connect with you. So come and be a part of any one of our worship experiences every Thursday night, 7 p.m., Sunday mornings, 11 a.m. Also, we want to join our faith with you. Do you need a miracle? Are you believing God for something extraordinary in your life? You can send up your prayer request today to prayer at jilc.org. If you've been blessed by this message, then sow a seed. Be a part of what we're doing, not just here on Long Island, but around the world. All the ways to give are on the screen right there. We love you. Until next time, be blessed.